We are Man vs. Meeple, and for July 3rd through July 16th, this is What's Next. Welcome back to What's Next, the bi-weekly show where we talk about all the games coming to your friendly local gaming store. And we are on July the 4th, so we're Happy, a little bit late yeah. getting this to you guys. Happy 4th of July for yes. all of you North American people. Yeah, well, and everyone else, Yeah, too. absolutely, absolutely. We have a list of games. We're just back from Origins, so we kind of skipped a week trying yep. to get back uh, caught up. We have a whole list of games this week. Huge list coming out yep. next week. We had a precursor. Take a look at that one, too. Some great games in the next two weeks as well. But we're going to start off with number five. What do you have, David? Yeah, number five is Sword and Sorcery. And we have to admit here, you may have heard the, <laughs> of this one before because we've had it on an, an earlier episode of What's Next. Yeah. yeah. Sword and Sorcery, I'll recap it because yes. it is a really cool game. This one's from Ares Publishing. It's a dungeon crawl style game. This one is built with an AI, so the, there's no over, overlord. Mm -hmm. You know, all the players are playing against the game, and it's from the people who did Galaxy Defenders, yeah. which is heralded for its sort of AI system that's built into it. Very so popular game. Yeah, very Absolutely. popular. And uh, another cool aspect, and I, and I talked about this before, but mm -hmm. it is probably one of the cooler aspects, I thought, because as a player of WoW, and you've played some MMOs in your time, there is a death system, so you can die in this game, but there's not, you're not out of the game. Yep. You play as an ethereal or a ghost, and you can actually gain new powers as an ethereal in the game. Not only that, you can continue playing that way, mm -hmm. but you can also go on one of those traditional corpse runs, like in an MMO, where you're going back to your corpse collecting all of your stuff and basically, you know, revitalizing yourself to go back into sort of the normal play, if you want, but awesome. you don't have to do that. Yeah. So it's a really cool feature. Uh, the artwork and the uh, graphic design on this are very, very well done. This thing was on uh, Kickstarter last year and yeah. is, is finally now hitting now. Yeah. Uh, the miniatures, really nice miniatures, really, really nice looking game. It's a game. big box, too. It it's is a big, a, robust it is a game. big, big box. Uh, you have number four, too. Yeah, number four is Arena for the Gods. We've done a, a review of a, this, a review of this yeah. a little while ago, and now it's finally hitting retail. This is the next one from Yellow. It's kind of in the vein of a King of Tokyo style game, but a little bit different. The, one of the cool mechanics that this one adds is this drafting. So you're playing as sort of gladiatorial creatures in yeah. this in this arena, and the arena can be built differently. You know, it's depending not on the modular, number of players, yeah. but you can build it differently depending on the number of players. At the beginning of the game, though, there is a draft. So you dish out all of this equipment, and people are going to draft using basically their life as the money that they're bidding for these pieces uh, of equipment and mounts equipment. and yeah. exactly. So you can grab, and there's I think basically three or four rounds of that equipment grabbing. Mm -hmm. So you could spend a lot of your money or health in that getting really good equipment, but then you're going to be running the game with very few hit points. Yeah. Or you can go the other route and yeah. maybe just not bid much. You're always going to end up with some piece of equipment. You just yeah. might not be able to get sort of the synergies across the equipment that you want. You can also play it just all players against each yeah, other. free for all. Or teams. Or one versus many. Yeah, the one versus many is really cool because it uh, the, the one player plays a kind of a beefed up character. So yeah. if you're going to do that, that person gets a lot more hit points and everyone's basically trying to coordinate against that character. Yeah. So there's a lot of different variations in the game. And the rolling mechanic is slightly different than mm -hmm. what you might expect from that style of game. Mm -hmm. You're going to be taking your dice and assigning them to your dis different pieces of equipment to execute their actions. Yeah. Uh, there's also some stuff that you know I can play to affect you so you can't roll as many dice. Yeah. Uh, there's some things, you, equipment you can have to re-roll dice, all sorts of things. Of really, variables, yeah. really good dice rolling, uh, push your luck game. I'm going to change gears on you. Yes, now it's Quite time for... Quite drastically. We're going to talk about two Euros. Euro games. <laughs> the first one is a very, very heavy game. This one's from Capstone. It's called Lignum. This is the second edition, not to be confused with the first edition, which was released only in Europe. Now, the second edition comes with the base game that everyone's familiar with, but also comes with two expansions. It has the joinery and the buildings. Yeah. Now, talk about Lignum in a nutshell. You're basically a woodcutter. <laughs> you have your own cabin. You're going out, taking different actions, collecting wood, and then using different types of meeples round after round to cut the wood, chop it up into the logs to sell that haul wood, it. to haul it. <laughs> whole bunch of different actions. It's a meaty game. It plays over eight rounds. Three of the rounds are collecting resources. You have two winners to cap off each of those seasons. Very, very heavy game. Now, the buildings expansion adds buildings that you can grab and keep with you for the rest of the game that give you special ongoing 
player abilities. Oh. And also the joiners, which comes from the joiner expansion, are meeples that you will collect and keep with you, which is different than the normal game. These meeples will help you collect income every single round and you will keep them. Very cool game. And that's cool. It's, so everything that was uh, expansions in Europe are now included in this yes. US release. Very yeah. cool. And it's a great game. We've had a chance to play yep. it uh, just last week. On the lighter end of the Euro scale, we have a game from Z-Man Games. This one plays two to four players. It's called Valletta. And it is a card management, kind of a deck building style yeah, game. Yeah, it's definitely got some deck building. Yeah, so you are managing a hand of cards at the start of every single one of the rounds. You're gonna draw five of your cards up and you're gonna only use three of those to collect resources and then use those resources to go out into the town and build buildings. When you place your meeples on these buildings, you're gonna collect a card on them, which adds to your deck of cards immediately, which is great because that card will go into your hand, which means you could also use it that round if you haven't played three cards already. I'm going to draw back up and keep doing that until one of three end game conditions are met. Now this is a great game because it plays for gateway gamers. Yeah. It's very easy to learn, but also for competitive Euro players that want to play it as oh, well. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is a game, after even after a couple plays, you can tell you with a little experience, you can play this game very, very well. Yep. Uh, and, and But if you're at a table of people who haven't played it at all, mm -hmm. it's easy to pick up. So one of the cool aspects I really like is at the end of the game, when the game end is triggered, everyone basically gets to take their entire deck that's been in their discard pile, basically reshuffle it, so everyone at the table gets one last chance to basically go through their entire engine, their entire engine that Very they've tried cool. to build. So it, it, it kind of gave you that last feeling of like running that gauntlet one more time to see what kind of points you can squeeze out of it. That was very, very fun. Cool game. Yeah. Number one, what do you have? Number one, we've done a review for this very yeah. recently. We can't stop talking about this game. It's called Where Words. This is from Bezier Games. It plays four to ten players. And this, I'll just start by saying, probably the party game of the year this year. For us. Early contender Absolutely. for sure. Yeah. This game, so if you're not familiar with Werewolf, uh, you've taken Werewolf and they've combined it with some other mechanics where there's a word that's basically also being guessed. So there's another role at the table. Not only just the werewolf and the villagers, uh, there's a seer and then there's the mayor. Mm -hmm. The mayor is going to basically be the center of a 20 questions game. Yeah. And the werewolf also knows the word, as does the mayor, and the seer knows the word. The villagers don't know the word. So during the 20 questions, the villagers are, and the seer are trying to guess the word. Yeah. The werewolf is basically trying to get everyone to not guess the word. Yeah. But then at the very end, there's a chance for either side to steal victory from the other, depending on how things shake out. Yeah. So it's very cool. The werewolf is trying to come up with vague questions that kind of feel right, but <laughs> potentially steer people in the wrong direction. And the seer is trying to lead it without giving it away too much. Because yeah. if, the, if, if the villagers win, the werewolf can steal victory by identifying or killing the seer. Yeah. So the seer doesn't want to give away too much that they know the word. What David's trying to say is there's so many cool, oh. subtle nuances in this game. When you play it, you just want to keep playing it. And in fact, we played a game of Near and Far, which is a fantastic game last yeah. night, and we capped it with like 10 games of were words. <laughs> four player, we, four which, player were which, words. Which we've been doing yeah. night after night. Every one of our game nights caps with this because it's such a good game. And you game. can't stop playing it. And you, it uses an app too. It's, so yeah. there's a huge variety of words that, that are available on the app as yeah, well. Yeah, it's a fantastic game. As soon as you see this game, Pick it up for sure, because yeah. this is going to be a hit at any gathering that you have for sure. Yeah. We're going to change gears uh, on this episode. Instead of featuring a friendly local gaming store, we're going to answer some questions from our viewers. Right. We, we decided to look into the comments and not just answer comments on, on YouTube and our social media, but we're going to do so right here. So the first question that we had, this is from, as best as I can read it, Jestery with E's that are threes, uh -huh. uh, and, and, and they ask, why is there an Eclipse poster? As a fan of the game, I'm interested to know if there's going to be something new released for it. Uh, so Jeremy, I, you can answer Eclipse this. Eclipse is one of my all-time favorite games. Uh, I have no idea if Lot of Play is going to release any new content for no. it. Um, I hope so. It's a fantastic game. And why this is here and why any of the posters are here is I create all these posters yeah. myself. Um, I create them in Photoshop. They're typically games that I enjoy playing or they have some really cool graphics to them and artwork. And I just like to have something behind me that, that showcases what I enjoy. Yeah, basically, in, in other words, Jeremy is a giant gaming nerd yeah. and he <laughs> likes posters of games behind him. Yeah. He doesn't really stylize too. But yeah. yeah, 
it has nothing to do with any inside knowledge yeah. of what's coming next. Yeah. And then we hopefully. Yeah, and if you're a publisher something. and you want to be shown up here, send me some cool assets, man. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I love to make stuff, so it has to be a game I like. I like though. Yes. So that's true. <laughs> uh, the second question we have is from Marco nine six zero three. He says, "Where did you get your Lisboa release date? It did not even hit backers yet, and they have to airship copies to Origins." There's no way it's hitting retail in the next two weeks. Yeah, so <laughs> let's, let's address this question. This comes up a few times every once in a while with our What's Next show. Obviously, the release dates for games, as, as evidenced by Sword and Sorcery yeah. today, are a moving target. And we're not always right. We, try, we work very closely with uh, our distributor friends at GTS, as well as just publishers, on the yeah. phone with publishers and checking in with retailers and whatnot to see if and when things are coming so that we can get these lists together. So sometimes we're off a little, sometimes we think we're right and everyone does, mm -hmm. but then a ship comes in late or yeah. something gets caught in customs, what have you. So things get a little bit delayed. We've even, we even had some things hop out a little earlier than we yeah. expected and we kind of missed them on an episode yeah. of What's Next. Yeah. So long story short, we're trying to do the best we can with those with those dates, and we will continue to do so. Hopefully, we'll get better and better. Yeah, it just shows you how different, too, that the board game industry is compared to the video game industry yeah. and the movie industry, where you know the exact release dates of things months in advance, and you can prepare for those type of things. Board game industry is a little bit different. Not saying it's good or bad, but you can't always hit those target dates. Right, and I think I think it's also a sign that as soon as they can get them, they get it out. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they don't say, okay, you know what, let's plan for it and say it's going to be eight months from now. As yeah. soon as it's here, they get it to stores. Yeah. So that's good for everybody. Yeah, it can be confusing to you guys, the <laughs> consumers, though. Anyway, uh, if you guys have any comments about the show, have questions to ask for us as well, we'll kind of go back yeah. and forth between the friendly local gaming store and answering questions about what's next for you guys, our viewers. Please ask them below, subscribe to us, and catch us in two weeks. We have a whole list of brand new, awesome yeah. games coming out. And we will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.